all these rules are just as important as each other and combine these four rules really make this color the best in my opinion currently on the market so rule two is to do with wave okay when i first started hairdressing you would see the old timers and they would be in the mixing room and they would be adding a bit of this and they would add and be adding a bit of that and then they'd be adding a splash of developer mixing and they'd just be like oh yeah i know the consistency <sighs> i'm not saying those days are gone but basically these are a chemical used properly by trained people they work if you're going to be slapdash with mixing it you're going to get slapdash results like I said, they're a chemical. They have been weighed to work to a certain formula, very precisely weighed to work to a certain formula. So really, you've got to weigh them. Now, you can use a cylinder and you could use the markings on the side of the tube. I don't like to. Um, the markings on the side of the tube aren't accurate. Cylinder stuff gets caught in the cylinder, plus you end up get, picking up a dirty cylinder and it, I just don't like it. So I always use a set of scales. They don't have to be posh scales. Scales are scales, they all weigh weight. Okay, and this way, by putting the bowl on the scale, turning them on so you don't weigh the bowl, everything goes into the bowl. It's neat, it's clean, and it's accurate when you do it. And if you mix up too little color for one client, or too much color for a client, you're able to then write this on the record card for the next time and adjust it. It really is the most accurate way of doing it. And once you get into the habit of doing it, I weigh everything, including my bleach, which again, I know a lot of people don't. And that's a whole nother video right there, um, <laughs> to be honest, because um, it would solve a lot of problems if people would actually just weigh their bleach properly. So rule two is all about your weight. Okay, now again, we say, or I say, an average regrowth is gonna need about 60 grams of tint. The mixing ratio for infinity is one to one and a half. And again, this seems to be a real big debate on a lot of things, but if you read the instructions, if you use it, it is one to one and a half. Again, there are certain instances you can muck around with this, but generally, like I said, I've never had to. So if you're doing 60 grams of tint, you're gonna need 90 grams, mils, whichever you work in, of your developer, okay? So that's gonna give you 150 grams of color, all right? And really, again, my advice when you're doing this is make sure you get every single bit of that color on the root. That sounds like a lot of color. So if after three or four applications, your client likes the color, it's bright and vibrant, it's long lasting, and it covers all the gray, and you think that that's too much color, then start to reduce it by five grams. However, if in six months your client's then coming back and going, this color's not lasting and, and it's, it's fading and, and my grays are coming through. And you pick up the record card and you've gone from 150 down to 80 or 70 or whatever. You're not putting enough color on. Basically, it's like me giving you five pound and going, oh, drive me from uh, Scotland to London. You're not gonna get there. And the same thing happens with the hair. If you're not actually putting enough color on, it draws in the color and goes, well, where's the rest? And it will look wishy-washy and it will look translucent and it won't cover the gray. So really, again, stick to that for the first few goes. If you do think that it is too much, then gradually and slowly reduce it until a point where you're going, hang on, no, this, this doesn't look right. So again, the other thing with the weight is whenever we are saying add a quarter, so in my first example, We'd gone one shade darker with 6.3 and we'd added in a quarter of the 601. So whenever you're doing that, we're always talking about this quarter being weight. Okay, stay with me on this, all right? 
So we've got 60 grams of tin, all right? What's a quarter of 60? 15, I think. Yeah, so 15, 45. Okay, so we're gonna then do 45 grams of our 6.3, and we're gonna do 15 grams of our 601. This then gives us our 60 grams of tin, and then we're gonna do our 90 grams of developer. Okay. So if ever we're talking about a quarter, a half, a third, again, it's always talking in weight. We're not guesstimating. Like I said, these are a chemical. Weighing it precisely, you will get the best results out of the color. Okay, and it's very important. Again, I mean, always use the example, if Mary Berry off the British Bake Off sort of goes, oh, 100 grams of flour and six eggs and you know, 10 grams of this, and if you muck around with that, your cake isn't gonna taste right. Well, this is even more chemically based than that. So you really do have to stick to the formula. And if you want to be creative, there are other ways of being creative within the color. Color placement, adding in intensives, but again, in a controlled way manner. So just make sure you weigh it one to one and a half, and you use enough color to do the job that you want to do. Again, a lot of people mix up color so that later on, they can comb that color through. Again, it's a whole nother video. It's probably gonna be my next video about combing color through. It's, it's a real pet hate of mine when people do that. Um, I used to do it, so hands up to that. But really, there are better ways, again, of doing it than combing color through. So that 150 grams is going on the roof. So now we're gonna look at rule three.